Hey everybody, Happy Scrappy 47 with you. We're going to go ahead and do the assembly of the Snow Bear Snow Plow here. Um, we're out in the Scrappy shop and got the Toyota here. What we've done is taken the Toyota and just pushed it back in the shop to the door so we can have the room in the front to assemble everything. And we'll have this to the back side. We're going to leave all the parts in the back of it and just carry them forward as we come. So we're going to start to assemble the plow. We're out in the shop and we got the big Mac Daddy wood stove going here. Nice and hot. Got the supervisor in charge. Got the wife. Um, so I'll have her grab the camera and we'll show you the first thing we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is take this cutting edge and it's going to go into the bolt holes that you can see along there. I don't know if she can get that. And um, we'll take all the bolts, put one in one end first, put one in the other end, and then we'll start a sound. We'll line those up and be back with you in a moment. Okay, so we got the cutting edge on here, or scraper blade on here. We got all of the, they're like bumper head carriage bolts lined up in here. Got all the nuts started on there, on the back side of them. They say in the video, their video, not to over tighten these nuts so that you don't scra scratch the paint. Uh, I'm not going to worry about scratched paint or anything. I don't want the scraper blade coming loose. So I'm going to go ahead and just use my rattle gun and because they're lock nuts on here with carriage bolts on the other side and then rattle gun them on. But I'm not going to over tighten them. But if it scrapes the paint, that it is what it is, because I don't want the cutting edge coming off on it. So that's where we're at here. Okay, so step number two, I guess we're on two. This is the lower A-frame, this is the upper A-frame. Take this upper A-frame, I looked at the pictures before I came on because obviously we're on a time limit. This face is up, these brackets face up. They talk about this release pin here. This will go in that hole, which you can see sticking out the back here. And then you got a hole up here in the front and you got a 5 8 bolt with a sleeve. Take the sleeve on it, come down with the bolt. That'll go down inside there and then when you tighten that up, you're supposed to leave about a quarter inch turn on the bolt so that this has play in it so that the plow's not bound up. Okay, so we got the top A-frame and the lower A-frame, we got the bolt and the sleeves down inside there with the washer and the lock nut on the back side. I tightened it down actually fully, backed it off a quarter turn, and I think this is what they want is they want this play in here so that your blade can work itself without binding up. So that's all assembled and ready to go. We'll go to the next step.
Okay, so now we're on the next step, which is bolting the winch to the winch bracket here. Um, you want to have your winch laid out the same way they have in the picture, because there's wind directions for the strap here. And also, on this winch bracket, you want to make sure that this bolt hole here is facing in the up position, and then they just got bolt holes lined up here, and we'll bolt them together with these 516 bolts and lock nuts. Okay, this is step four, guys. This step was a little bit of a cluster. Um, I really recommend that you have two people. You need an extra set of hands. I know that the Costco video or the other video that the guy floats through yeah, it makes it look like he does it one person, but discount the A-frame stuff down here. What we did was we took the winch and the winch bracket, which I had already bolted together and tightened down, and we loosely mounted them with these big bolts to these two arms here, and then these arms come down and they have the solid plug pins in them, and then there's holes you got to line up and start this here. I haven't tightened anything down. Well the problem was the little winch with the motor is fairly heavy and then trying to get these two brackets with the <coughs> excuse me winch mount in between them to get those started and then get this down here and then line up the holes in these pins was kind of a pain. This was heavy enough my wife couldn't sit there and hold it while we were trying to line this. So I just used a little bracket here I did discover you could probably use the foot that goes in here and just put a pin in it, but I just I just grabbed a piece of steel out of the shop and used it to block this up here. But right now the winch is just loosely mounted to this. These arms come down, there's solid plugs in both sides here, and then these bolts here. And now what we'll do is go through and tighten these up, and then we'll finish tightening the winch. Step four will be done. Okay, we're on step five here, guys, girls, and I did a little cheater thing because I saw it in their picture. They don't tell you to do this, but I took this leg that I talked about in the unboxing, went ahead and lifted the winch brackets up and the winch up, stuck the leg in and pinned it so that we could remove our little um, block that we put in of steel and move on to step five. We unwound the winch strap you use a little U-bolt here that goes through the winch strap and it's going to drop down through here and it's got a couple nuts on the back side of it. Now you want to just loosely tighten, well I don't like loosely tightening anything, but you want to not tighten these all the way down because you'll bind the strap up and prematurely tear through the strap and, and, uh, and rip it. And you are using they're not nylock nuts, they're regular lock nuts that are dimpled. And so once you get it on here, make sure it's sunk in far enough that you're into the lock nut and it shouldn't come off on you. But don't over tighten this. So basically we got the rigging for the winch mounted and pinned. We put the leg in it, pinned it to hold it for us. Got the winch on here. This winch faces the driver's side of the truck. I thought it was going to face the passenger side so I could have the cord come out that side, but I'm not sure how I'm going to do the wiring yet. But the winch faces, faces the driver's side of the truck and then brought the unwound the strap and we're going to mount the strap here and then we're going to put the nuts on the back side. And then, uh, well, we'll show you the next step when we get there. Okay, so now I wanted to show you guys the next thing. We brought the blade up to the rigging itself and where these three brackets are on the rigging they line up with the backing holes on the blade itself and then you got these pins which I don't know if I can do this here but oh, yeah maybe slide the pin in through washer
there you go. You got to do the same thing with the center one and the same thing with the other outside and then the rigging's attached to the blade. Okay, so on the next step, guys, they say to take the spring, hook it in here, hook your eye bolt up, and put your nut on there. But I'm thinking when the blade snaps, because I've snapped them before, it's possible that this blade, even though you got your tension built on here and it shouldn't happen, but we know how that happen, works, this could pop out of your blade. So I'm going to change this up a little bit and hook this from under to back and down like that. And then I'm going to take my eye bolt in here, hook it on here, and then I'll put my nut on the bottom and the instructions say to go one quarter turn or, an, or a quarter inch actually, go one quarter inch past when this spring first receives tension, go a quarter of an inch past that. So I am going to change this up a little bit and hook it in this way, then your eye bolt here and that, and we got to put them on the other side and that will be the springs. Okay guys, step seven was to assemble the uh, release handle that actually releases the pin for your manual angle. It was a little bit of a confusing step. It took us a few minutes to figure it out. Just the handles and stuff because you got this handle here and it's got two bolt holes in it. And then you got an arm that comes back here and goes to this release pin. Well this arm has an angle in it, has an angle in it here. So what you do is you take this handle, faces upward, it's got two holes in the bottom, bolt your bottom one in loosely. It has to be able to move. They don't say it in the book, but you, you quickly figure that out because you got to be able to slide that. So you tighten this down and then back it off a hair. This one has a washer in it, so I tightened it down, backed it off a hair because both this has to swivel at the bottom and this has to swivel to pull the pin. So you put those two in there and then drop your arm down and it comes down, comes into your release pin here and you put a bolt through there with a lock nut on the other side. And then when, obviously I can't do it, but when you want to release the angle, you just push this forward, it releases a pin out here, down here and you got extra holes on each side. So basically when you're on your truck, you'll come up, release, swivel it and drop it into your hole. And that was your release handle. Okay, so now that we got the release handle on there, that's pretty much the full assembly of your plow unit. You can see the plow blade there. We haven't put our whip antennas on yet. And the release handle, they never did talk about that leg. We just used it as a cheater, so it is what it is. And then you got your rigging or A-frames or whatever, but everything is assembled at this point. We'll be moving on to the wiring. We do have our mount kit for the truck. It came in from Snow Bear, but we're going to go ahead and start on some of the wiring because that's what it says next in the book. And we're kind of doing this by the guide here, help in case somebody wants to use this in the future. So we'll go to the wiring next, but that's your complete ply unit right there. I don't think we missed anything. Back with you in a sec.